What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. And with this video, we are jumping into the 10 deaths of Wolverine, issue number 1. And if you didn't catch the 10 lives of Wolverine, go ahead, check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It is going to get you completely caught up on everything that happened in that issue number one. And in that issue, I did call it the X lives of Wolverine. Believing that's how it was, they're going with the Ten of Swords thing, so it is definitely a Roman numeral. I saw that it is confirmed. It is the Ten Lives and Deaths of Wolverine. Maybe I was the only one confused about that, but just wanted to make sure that there's a little bit of clarification. And what we saw in the 10 lives of Wolverine is Professor X putting Cerebro onto his head. And in doing this, his consciousness is transported back in time and he saves tiny little baby Professor X. And so while the 10 lives storyline is going to be more than likely time jumping us all over the place, the 10 deaths of Wolverine look like they are taking place during present day as he is currently hooked up and Professor X has him on the machine. And so be sure to buy the comics, support the industry, and with that being said, oh, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, this is picking us up right where Inferno had left off. And that is with Moira making a run for her life, with Cypher, Bay the Blood Moon, and Krakoa itself coming to her aid. They give her an opportunity to run away, with her depowered, now exiled, having no friends. She has no choice but to accept everything that is happening, and she has no choice but to run as fast as she can. Because while her life may have been spared this day, Mystique vowed that she will hunt her down to the ends of whatever planet she is on. Being given a bio-organic tech arm, she runs as fast as she can, stealing a truck and destroying the gate that she had come through, hoping that this will slow Mystique down just a little bit, giving her an opportunity to get ahead. And she recognizes where this gate has taken her, she is back in Scotland, back where it all began. And as she sits here in the barn, this is when she begins to cough up some blood. And for as long as she's known, she has never feared death. But now, it appears that death is now at her doorstep, thinking maybe, just maybe, it's time for a change. But more than anything, what she has boiling in her veins is rage. Because Charles, Eric, they both decided that they were going to protect her, and when it came down to it, they were nowhere to be found. Now that's when we're taken to Kokoa, and Black Tom, he had found himself at the lagoon having a good drink. That is until he feels something off, something weird, something going on with the vegetation. Recognizing something is astray, he runs out into the woods, and in the woods, there is a rumbling. Something is coming from underneath the ground. Not sure what kind of threat this is. There was no detection of anything at any point in time. But nonetheless, something breaks the surface. With a green goo oozing out of everywhere, Black Tom has no idea what the heck he is even staring at. Now Moira has made her way back to the United States, with her currently in a medical institute trying to figure out what is wrong with her. Though she already had the answer, it is cancer, stage 4. She knows this is terminal, she knows that this is going to be fatal, and there is almost no chance of reversing it. The only thing that might be able to help her is petals from Krakoa, and even then, it won't cure cancer, it will only slow it down. But that's what Moira needs, she just needs more time. And she really doesn't want to explain everything to her friend. She's just letting her know that there is no way she can go to Krakoa to get them. Because there are individuals on that island that want her dead. With the nurse coming in and the doctor making her way out, that nurse just so happened to be Mystique. With her transforming once they are alone in the room, this is when she goes to attack Moira. With Moira pinned in this doctor's office, 
it looks like this might be the end of her. With her fighting with everything she has to stay out of the grasp of Mystique. This is when from the hallway, we see the door knocked right off of the hinges. It lands on Mystique and we have the arrival of Valkyrie. And Valkyrie is here to give Moira the opportunity to make her go. And Moira wanted time. That's what the good doctor, aka Valkyrie, is giving her. Giving her the opportunity to have that time. With Valkyrie holding her off for as long as she can. Giving Moira the opportunity to run. This is where we pick up with Black Tom. And what he is currently looking at is an egg. Some kind of egg that was brought up from the depths of Krakoa. Appearing to come from the island itself. Black Tom has no idea what this is. But we see this egg. As it begins to hatch, Black Tom, he recognizes who is inside. And what we see is a bio-organic arm. This arm having three claws that are coming out of it. And before Black Tom can do anything, these claws, they dash him to pieces. And leaving Black Tom dead and bleeding, we see the shadow of what we can only assume is Wolverine. And when it comes to Moira, Mystique is not the only one that is hunting her down. Getting a ping of her visuals, catching her on CCT cameras outside of the hospital, the CIA, the X-Desk, they find this very interesting. An individual that has been off-grid for a very long time. So either she is a defector or she has just escaped prison. Regardless of the situation, they send out a team to track her down. Now at this point, she recognizes she doesn't have a lot of time. Being on the radar of Mystique, knowing that the CIA, the x desk they are going to be tracking her as well. She goes to change her appearance, cutting her hair and dyeing it blonde, looking like somebody completely else. But this is only going to give her a little bit of time to get ahead of everybody. And so with her transformation... At Moira's No Place, this is where we have that shadowy, earth-dwelling Wolverine. Still not giving us a complete glimpse of him, but it appears that he is hunting Moira. And so while she has everything going against her, now she has Wolverine appearing to be hunting her down. And as Moira makes her way through the crowds, this is where she sees the CIA operatives. With them being very recognizable, she goes to make her escape, going into a place known as Epiphany. And the product that they are pitching in holograms, it's kind of like storing all of your memories, all of your thoughts, taking your consciousness and putting it onto a hard drive. Because this is an ocular device that records everything you see and say and automatically uploading every single night so that you never lose a single minute. Now, of course, this is something that is obviously very dangerous, and them throwing it in here, it's obviously going to be playing a part in the near future. But while she's in this place, the CI agents, they catch up with her, trying to escort her out of here without making any kind of scene. Moira definitely makes a scene. Giving them some good licks, she tries to make her escape. Barely being able to get away from them, she runs outside, she steals a motorcycle, and she hightails it out of here. And she really does have it rough right now, because she is dying from cancer, she no longer has her powers, Mystique is hunting her down, the CIA are hunting her down, and she doesn't know it yet, but some kind of weird object, some kind of weird organic individual coming up from Kakoa looking like Wolverine is now hunting her down as well. And that is when we are taken to the cradle, with Wolverine currently laying on the table, with Charles and Jean standing nearby. It makes it very weird for Jean Grey to feel Wolverine, to feel Logan thinking that it is impossible because Logan is laying right here in front of her. So how is it possible that Wolverine is on Krakoa moving about, telepathically communicating with him and asking, is that you? I don't understand what is going on, but is it you? And our Wolverine, he lets her know that he is no one and he was never here. 
Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up with Moira in Oklahoma, trying to stay on the down low. She has changed her hair color, she has changed her whole look, and now she is simply trying to survive. And this survival is going to come at the hands of being a criminal, robbing this gas station, taking everything she needs. Getting a burner phone, she makes a call out to Jane Foster also known as Valkyrie, because Moira had originally gone to her trying to get some kind of diagnosis, finding out that she has cancer. This cancer is going to eventually kill her, but the unique thing about her cancer, it has fluorinic properties, which means it's possible that the people on Krakoa are the ones that gave it to her. But with her thanking Jane, she ditches the phone out the window and she goes back into hiding. And so with Moira on the run, we are picking up in the Gulf of Mexico. And we have some regular Joes out here just fishing on the ocean. And when one of the fishermen begin to catch something, he starts reeling it in. With him reeling in this ginormous shark. As it begins to surface, they see that it has wounds. These wounds inflicted by what looks like a claw. And it doesn't take long for Wolverine to board their ship. And this is the Wolverine that had hatched in the middle of Krakoa. And with him grabbing each one of them and throwing them all overboard, he has commandeered this ship. And if you guys are still a little bit confused on who this Wolverine is, don't worry about that. As we get further into the story, we're going to dive into exactly where this Wolverine had come from. But first, we have to jump over to New Mexico. And this is where Moira is currently hiding out. And now that she is alone and has nothing but time on her hands, she sits here and contemplates how this whole situation, it was never supposed to go like this. Because her and Charles Xavier, they came up with this dream together. It is something that they both wanted, and now she is on the run, and she doesn't even know if Charles is paying attention to her existence any longer. All she knows is that Mystique is on the hunt for her. Believing that the X-Men have turned their backs on her, she has nowhere else to go. But as she sits here in her contemplation, she begins to realize that Mystique was able to find her. And she believes that she is being tracked. And there is only one explanation on how that is possible. That explanation is the arm that she had gotten. And so while she prepares to do the insane, we have someone showing up at the hotel, showing up trying to find out the location of where Moira is. But this individual is the one and only Mystique. Hiding behind a disguise, she has come to track down Moira and end her life. Meanwhile, Moira is sitting in a bath of iodine and she is preparing to cut her own arm off. The arm that she was given right before she escaped Krakoa. Because she knows this is how they are keeping tabs on her. This is how they are tracking her. And so cutting that arm off, taking an iron, and cauterizing the wound. We see how truly tough Moira is. And it doesn't take long for Mystique to make her way into this room. Making the hotel clerk bleed out just to get this information, she kicks down the door, guns blazing, shooting at the bed, going over to check it out, only to find an arm and nothing but bloodstains. But she also left a parting gift. That gift is a bomb sitting underneath the bed. And with Mystique now in this room, we see a giant explosion. And with Destiny back on Krakoa, she had warned Mystique that this was a possibility. Believing that Mystique could just outdo all of the odds, that she could change the future, that nothing was really set in stone. This is a I told you so moment for Destiny. But on the horizon, she senses something that may help them out. A man in black which she refers to as death itself. That death being the Wolverine that had hatched in the middle of Krakoa. And this is when we are taken to the armory. Right now, Professor X, Jean Grey, and Forge are trying to figure out what this egg is. And while Forge is still currently trying to figure out exactly what is going on here, and by all appearances, this thing has been on Krakoa for a very long time. And though it is Krakoan, it has been here much longer than anyone has ever imagined. Because this egg itself, while it is Krakoan, it is a thousand years older than Krakoa. Saying that it doesn't belong here, and it appears it came from out of time. 
And so this is only leading to one conclusion. This is the phalanx. With them picking up a broadcast that is saying we are the phalanx over and over and over again. And this all is going to make sense if we go back to the power of X. Because it was revealed in Moira's sixth life that she had survived thousands of years into the future. And in this time, she and Logan were among the few mutant survivors of this timeline. And with mutants dying off, humans had used genetic engineering to evolve themselves into what they called the post-humans. And they had one singular goal in mind. Become one with the phalanx and ascend. With Wolverine killing Moira before the world had been assimilated, there is a possibility that upon her death, the world, including Wolverine, had been assimilated. They had all ascended. And while Moira, she definitely has the ability to reset timelines with her death, these guys live outside of time and space. So it is very possible that when Moira died, they were not affected. And so what we can surmise from this information is that Wolverine more than likely ascended. And with his ascension, this egg was planted there waiting for the day to hatch. And by all appearances, this Wolverine is going after Moira. And while it may look like he is going in to try and kill her, it could very easily be that he is here to protect her. And this is where Wolverine, he shows up at the hotel. With this place on fire, cops everywhere, Wolverine, he walks directly into the flames. The police officers, they're not knowing what to do about this situation. Asking each other, maybe we should stop him, maybe we shouldn't. The guy just walked into fire. He walked into a burning building. Do we really want to go bug him? But as he makes his way into this hotel room, he finds the skeleton of Mystique. He finds the arm left behind by Moira, and with her not being here, he goes out to continue his hunt. The police officers, they do what they can to try and stop him, but that was a huge mistake on their part. Because this only backfires, and he takes these guys down. With Wolverine going over and stealing a police cruiser, up on the ridgeline, this is where we have Moira with her sniper rifle keeping tabs on everything going on. And for Moira, she has lived and died and lived again. And over and over and over again, it is always the same conclusion. Mutant kind always meets their end. And this time, they wanted something different. With them getting their wish and her seeing the future, she never thought that it would come this quickly. Alright gang, so as we dive into issue number 3, we are picking up with Laura, aka Wolverine, and Scout. And as they are making Making their way through Krakoa, this is where they are met by Charles Xavier. And though Xavier does sneak up on Wolverine, if Charles had actually been in his regular form, he probably might have gotten diced up here. But lucky for him, this is just a projection, and he has come to Wolverine to seek some kind of help. Because right now, with Logan currently busy doing his Terminator thing, we have Omega Wolverine appearing out of nowhere, hatching directly from the heart of Krakoa. This Omega Wolverine is out there causing all kinds of mayhem. Not sure what his end goal will be. Charles Xavier wants Laura to go and track down this Omega Wolverine. With Logan currently preoccupied, Laura is the one individual he wants to turn to. Because if you are going to hunt a Wolverine, why not send a Wolverine to do the hunting? And from the treetops, this is where we see Scout coming down with her one claw on top of Charles. And letting him know that it is going to be Wolverines that are hunting the Wolverine. And this is what's going to take us to a campus in California. And we have this more or less tech billionaire who is about to give a speech. Letting his shareholders know what is in store for the next quarter, so on and so forth. You know, it's just that typical Silicon Valley stuff. But we see Dolores come up, Dolores from the CIA, letting him know that his life could be in danger. That Moira could be coming and looking for him, that there is a threat against his life. 
And so the CIA, they want to take him into protection. Now, of course, this is something that he is not willing to do. His shareholders, they want to hear what is coming up. He is about to do a huge reveal on what is next for his company. And so because of this, he declines the CIA's offer to give him protection. And so the only thing the CIA can do is protect the perimeter. Ensure that no one gets in here that shouldn't be here. And on the outside of the building, this is where we see a squad car pulling up. Lights blaring and stepping out of that car is Omega Wolverine. Crashing through their barricades, the police, the CIA, they start unloading on Omega Wolverine. But not a single one of these bullets affect him. And with the arrival of Omega Wolverine, this is where the alarms go off. Our tech billionaire Arnab, he goes running. He heads off with his private security, getting to his helicopter as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, on the outside, Omega Wolverine, he is showing no mercy to anybody, cutting his way through every single one of them. And in the last issue, we had seen Omega Wolverine go after Moira. By all appearances, it looked like he was trying to hunt her down. Though we didn't know his motives at the time, it now looks like he has one goal, and that is to take out Moira. Unlucky for Wolverine, she saw the suit. The suit that looks like it is Phalanx. And she knew immediately exactly what he was. Because her history, it is the future. And with the mutants failing every single time, they fail against humans, against AI. And every time, Moira has been there to bail them out. But with this Omega Wolverine coming to the scene, something has changed. She is no longer their savior. She is their Judas. And with this Omega Wolverine coming from the future, with mutants sending an assassin after Moira, she knows that she is responsible for ending them. And in a very weird way, this gives Moira hope. That hope that she is able to survive through everything that is currently going on. And while Wolverine is currently preoccupied at this campus, we have our tech billionaire, he is in his helicopter and he is flying to a safe location. And this is exactly what Moira had anticipated to happen. She is the one that called in the threat to the CIA. She let them know that something was going to be there. Knowing they would evacuate this guy to this location. This is where Moira is able to grab him. Because after everything she has experienced so far since the Inferno event, she has learned one thing. And that is, if mutants are coming for her, if it's a hundred years from now, if it's a thousand years from now, that means that she is on the right path. And so grabbing Arnab and putting him hostage, this is where she takes the opportunity to try to break things down for him. To let him know that Omega Wolverine is after us. He is hunting us down, and if we don't work together, both of us are going to end up dead. Giving him a little bit of evidence, they turn on the news channels, and this is where they have a perfect image of Omega Wolverine. Now, of course, our tech billionaire, he doesn't really understand what is going on right now. But Moira is about to fill him in and lets him know the fact that they are after us right now means what we are about to do, it works. And so we are going to win this. We are going to survive because we have already won. Meanwhile, back at the campus, Omega Wolverine, he has his hands freaking full with the CIA after him. He is trying to let them know that they need to get out of his way. He is not going to let anybody or anything stop him. And this is where we see Laura enter the scene. With her coming in, Wolverine lets her know that if I have to kill you, I will. Letting her know that she can come back to the dead right now. Later on, you won't be able to do so. And then we have Scout jumping on his back. Omega Wolverine throws her off. What he did not expect was to see Dakin. Convincing Dakin to come because they thought maybe it would be therapeutic to go ahead and take some swings at your old man. Or at least some wannabe version of Wolverine. But as Dakin sits here and fights him, the way he talks, the way he fights, the way he smells. This is in fact Logan. This is the man that he is called father. And this makes him stop fighting. Omega Wolverine, he puts his claws away and he lets the entirety of the Wolverine family know that none of them make it. He knows how each one of them die. And then we see him peel over. 
appearing to have some kind of tremendous wound to his stomach. What this is telling me is this isn't some alternate version, this isn't some alternate timeline. This is the same Logan that is currently doing the, the Terminator thing with Xavier. This is Logan from the future coming back to try to stop Moira. And that's where we pick up with Arnab and Moira. And Moira currently is unloading everything. Everything she knows about mutants, at least from her perspective. And as the tech billionaire, he sat there and he listened to the entire story. Most of it probably seeming very unbelievable. But a man of science, in this laboratory, everything that they have seen up to this point, it's not out of the realm of possibility. And once she had finished talking, he sat there for a minute, he took all of the information in, and then he told her, let's get to work. Because Moira, what she plans to do is save the world from mutants and the two of them working together working day and night not leaving this laboratory they get to work on creating what comes next specializing in the fields of robotics the two of them work together and what it appears that they are creating is an omega sentinel and they're also talking about trying to put her consciousness into this robot. And so what we could see is Moira Sentinel. Of course, there are definitely some ethical questions on if we are playing God. Should we continue down this road? But Moira is more concerned about leaving mutant kind unchecked. At this point, they have already mastered resurrection. They are immortal. And while many people see them as gods, Moira has begun to see them as devils. And that is what's going to take us one millennium into the future. Picking up at the preserve 1,000 years in our future. And at this point in time, the phalanx is ready to accept them. Moira telling this to Wolverine. That the world, it will all end tomorrow. And our old man Logan at this point, believing Moira to be long dead. But the truth is, Moira has been in hiding, watching him for centuries. Wolverine has only really lived this long because he is curious. He wants to know how all of this came to be. And the answer is Moira. And as Moira pulls up her arm cannon, she puts a blast right through the stomach of Wolverine, letting him know that she has been waiting all of this time, waiting for that look on his face, and she has been waiting to kill the last mutant. That being the end of one story, and the beginning of another. Oh man guys, I'm so excited! Okay, so as we dive into issue number 4, we are picking up in the near future. We're picking up in the armory, with Forge looking more like an old man. Wolverine is telling him that they are getting close to the end, and that is exactly why he is here down in the armory. Forge has brought him for the seed, the seed that will let him go back in time. This is their fail seed. This seed being made with the same technology that created the gates. This should allow him to travel through time. With the end almost being here, Forge has not had the opportunity to actually test this out, so he doesn't know how it's going to work. With Forge plucking out the eye of Wolverine, he takes that seed and he plants it behind his eye. This is to keep it safe. This is to keep it hidden. And then when the time is right, you can take out your eye, you can use this seed, you can go back in time and you can fix everything. You can figure out how this happened. And what we see are sentinels attacking the island of Krakoa. Nimrod appearing to be leading this charge. Orcus has brought down the wonderful, amazing island that had been created. The paradise of all mutant kind has finally fallen. And that's what takes us to the far future. We pick up in the preserve. When we last left off here, we were picking up with Moira and Wolverine. Moira using her arm cannon and blowing a hole right through Wolverine, with him being the last mute. This has been Moira's goal ever since the day she had been banished from Krakoa. Ever since the day Mystique and Destiny took her powers away. And Wolverine had been searching for years, trying to figure out where it all went wrong. What caused the demise of Krakoa? What made 
mutant kind go extinct. And that reason was Moira. It was her all along. And that's because she served mutant kind. Lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. And when mutant kind had finally got what they wanted, they turned their back on her. She was stripped of her powers. She was put into exile. And now it is finally done. The last mute bleeding out on the ground, believing that this is a done deal. As she walks away, Wolverine, he pulls out his claw. Seeing the phalanx is on his claw, his healing factor is the only thing that keeps it at bay. The only thing that keeps phalanx from taking over Wolverine. But he pulls out his eye, he takes that seed that Forge had given him so many years ago, and he plants it. Creating a cocoon around Wolverine, he traverses time. He goes back to take out the one person responsible for the demise of mutant kind. Being the last mutant, he had survived as a revolutionary, as a terrorist. Eventually, they captured him, losing years to torture, to experiments. They finally threw him into the preserve. More or less, it's a zoo for people, escaping more than once, always trying to find out the root cause. Them never finding the seed. Now that he knows, it is time for him to go back. Jumping us to the present, we are picking up with the future Wolverine, or Phalanx Wolverine, along with Dakin and the rest of the Wolverine family, with them currently tracking down Moira, trying to figure out where she is. He has been able to convince them to work with him, that killing Moira is the only thing that is going to save all of mutant kind. Getting to the laboratory and the doctor she was working with, they are already too late. Moira is already gone, and the doctor, he is refusing to give any information to Logan. But he didn't come all this way. He didn't endure everything he did for all of those years to be stopped right here, telling him that he is going to get this information one way or another. With a doctor pulling out an energy weapon and blasting Wolverine in the chest, this blast he feels with great pain. Already having a wound from Moira shooting him in the chest, getting shot again, he definitely feels this. If his healing factor ever were to disappear or to stop working or not work good enough, Phalanx would take over and he tells the kids to kill me, to not let me be taken over by Phalanx. But sitting the doctor down, sitting the scientist down, he lets him know that you look around this room and you see my family. And for me, they have all already died. Dakin, he dies from a sentinel blast. Scout, she is depowered by Nimrod and then she is ripped in half. Laura, aka Wolverine, she's tortured. She's experimented on. This happens for years. They harvest her organs. They harvest her skin. He tells them to take a good look at them because while they die, that's not all that dies. Mutant kind is not all that is taken out. It is humans as well. Everybody gets gobbled up at the end. And so he promises on the graves of his children that he will not kill him. Not if he gives him the information that he wants. And he lets us know that Moira, she is headed to Krakoa. She is headed back to the island. With Wolverine using one of his claws, expanding it into his brain, we see it go up and come back in a swift motion, essentially giving him a lobotomy, promising that he would not kill him, but he also doesn't want the knowledge he has in his brain ever getting out again, telling the others that they need to burn this place down, all the way down to the smallest micro processor. And then we go hunt on the island. Taking us to Krakoa, this is where we pick up with Moira. She uses the skin of Banshee, letting him know that they have spent lifetimes together as friends, asking for one favor, asking to help her get on the island. That help comes in the form of using his skin, having resurrection. This death would mean nothing to him. And so Moira killing him, using the skin, going through the gateway. She is snuck on to enact her plans, making her way into the armory. She has gone in here to grab the gun that took away her powers. The nullifier gun that they had used, she hopes that if she uses it on herself again, she will have the opportunity to reverse the effects, to get her powers back, and then restart this all over again. With her inside the armory, we see the arrival of Charles, coming through in a projection because he is too busy dealing with everything going on with Wolverine currently, and all that is taking place in the 
and lives of Wolverine. And Charles tries to let her know that what happened to her, it wasn't his decision. That they created a government, a government that they believe in, having to set his personal feelings to the side. But he does ask her to be careful. She had never been registered with Cerebro. Her memories have never been stored in the cradles. And so this life is her last life and she needs to be careful with it. And when it comes to her cancer, Charles Xavier is offering Krakoan medicine. Getting caught completely off guard, we have Forge coming in and letting her know that that nullifier gun, it will not reverse what happened to you. Your powers are gone. Nothing is going to change that. And he made sure of this because Destiny told him that she would be returning. That Moira would come back and try this exact thing. Moira, she turns the nullifier gun onto Forge. She shoots him with it and she makes a run for it. Jumping into the Krakoan suit that Forge had built. This kind of organic tech mech suit. She lets them know that she is going to burn this island down to the ground. With Destiny in her sights, this is exactly who she goes after. Telling them if she had just listened. If the rest of the Quiet Council had listened. If we had no more precogs, none of this would be happening right now. Going to take care of Destiny. Going to take her out of the equation. We see our phalanx Wolverine. He comes into the scene. Coming through one of the gateways, he goes directly after Moira. His claws sinking right into her gut. He is able to take down Moira, but not before she is able to shoot him with the nullifier gun. With this shot, his healing factor is no more. Logan, Wolverine is no longer a mute. Telling Destiny, now that his power is gone, that Phalanx, they will take over. That there is nothing that is going to stop it. Trying to tell her that he needs to be killed. He is completely taken over, saying three words. We are Phalanx. Alright gang, so as we are diving into the final issue of this series, we are picking up with Moira bleeding out, saying her last words. As she thinks back on all of the 10 lives that she has lived, this is never how she wanted it to end. But with her dying breath, she swears that she will not let Charles Xavier win. And right now on the island of Krakoa, Moira was really the least of their concern. Because we have Omega Wolverine coming from a thousand years in the future. He finds himself all the way back here to stop Moira. And though he was able to do this, it came at a heavy cost. That cost was his mutant ability. With Moira stealing the nullifier from Forge's armory, she used it on Omega Wolverine, with his healing factor being the only thing keeping Phalanx at bay. When his mutant abilities go away, Phalanx completely takes over. And all of our Wolverines, they are fighting with every bit of their power right now. They are trying to hold this Phalanx off, but he has one goal. Goal. Phalanx Wolverine is headed for the cradle. It is going there to infect. With Cerebro being a port, it's an access point for all of their biotech network. If Phalanx is able to upload to this, it would be everywhere. It would be every win. And so as Beast worked frantically to make the Cradle an independent unit and separated from the network, Sage, she had something else in mind. While Sage gets to work on the Cerebro Sword, we have all of our Wolverines just trying to slow Omega Wolverine down. And this is exactly what they let Sage know. Lucky for the Wolverines, this is where Logan shows up. And Logan wastes no time going in and taking on Omega Wolverine. With the Phalanx trying to let him know that all of his efforts are futile. Because once he makes it to the Cradle, it will be completely over for all mutant kind. The future of a thousand years, it will start today. And so while Logan holds him at bay, we have Sage who is reprogramming the Cerebro Sword. As it glows a bright green, she charges into battle, letting Beast know that he needs to get the systems offline just in case she fails. And as Logan continues to fight Omega Wolverine, he tells all of the other Wolverines they need to stand back, believing that this is his atonement, that he will take all the pain, all the punishment, if it means protecting those kids. If it means protecting all of mutant kind. And with this battle raging on, we see the arrival of Sage. 
coming in with the Cerebro Sword that she reprogrammed with nanites. These nanites are meant to counter-program the engineering of Wolverine's skeleton. This is all in a hopes to stop the phalanx by stopping the vehicle itself. With her throwing the sword to Logan, he grabs hold of it and he thrusts it into the chest of Omega Wolverine. And a giant surge of green energy blasts all of them back, leaving nothing but a skeleton left over of what was Omega Wolverine. With the adamantium being scrubbed clean of any technology, of any circuitry, we see the island Krakoa take it into itself. And with the defeat of Omega Wolverine, Logan is ready for a drink. With all of our Wolverines, Charles Xavier and Jean Grey all celebrating this victory. Today, they saved mutant kind. Not only did they defeat Moira, but they also deleted Phalanx. And furthermore, they even defeated Omega Red. And while Logan doesn't really think that this is a celebration, this is a more, we're lucky we're alive. Off in the corner, we have Beast and Sage having a conversation. And Beast makes a really, really great insight right here. Because there is one very important thing that everyone needs to acknowledge. The only reason they won today is because of Wolverine. He is the medicine and the penicillin for this fight. Wolverine being the best there is. Because he's not like the individuals that are on the council. As they try to guide Krakoa and worry about endless over diplomatic nonsense. Wolverine is the best there is because he is a savage killer. And while Beast doesn't love him, he understands that he is the sharpest tool they have. And while many, they prefer not to acknowledge this fact. In the end, Force wins. Stabbing, gutting, and killing. That is what's going to save the world. And so while our Krakoans, they celebrate this day, we pick up a little later on. 10 days after the death of Moira. And while the X-Men and all of Krakoa believe her to be dead, the truth of the matter is she loaded her consciousness into a robot. She may not have mutant abilities anymore, but through science and technology, Moira is now living her 11th life. Coming back as Moira Sentinel. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Now there's a couple of things that we need to dive into. The first thing I want to bring up is a little bit of history they give us. Inside this comic, they're letting us know that in the future, we learn exactly what mutants are taken out. Or at least notable mutants that are taken out. The first one being Marvel Girl, aka Jean Grey. Because Jean Grey, she was essentially a nuclear bomb waiting to go off. If Moira and the Sentinels, Orcus, all of them are going to overcome Krakoa, they had to take her down first. Using a spy, they are able to poison her. Her completely unaware of this, they are taking her off the board. Nightcrawler had survived for quite some time by teleporting, but after years of jumping all over the place, eventually his eyesight gave out. He developed cataracts and he was essentially blind. And through his blindness, it was only a matter of time before the Sentinels came for him. Magneto, he fought wave after wave of Sentinels. He destroyed entire platoons, thinking that he would be undefeatable. That is until he came in contact with techno-organic forces. Using a cloud of nanites, they got into his lungs and they ate Magneto from the inside out. And when the network of cradles was finally breached by a virus, Charles Xavier collapsed. Getting locked inside the Cerebro helmet, this became a prison for him. Now that little bit of information, it could be relatively unimportant to everything that is going to happen. This could be simply a what if situation if this future had really unfolded. Now there's no saying that this future isn't going to unfold, but at least for today, that future has been stopped. And this issue really did fold out exactly like I thought it was going to. With Moira becoming Moira Sentinel, the phalanx was getting taken off the Board, at least for the time being. More than anything, setting the stage for Immortal X-Men, Destiny, everything that is still yet to come. I think I'm most excited that we're just finally pushing the narrative forward. We're moving the Doomsday Clock one minute closer. 
and individuals like Beast are finally starting to recognize, though they've been recognizing for quite some time, that the council, that is the biggest problem with Krakoa right now. Whenever they actually need something done, they call in Logan, they call in the X-Force. They have these guys stab and cut their way through all of their problems. And they're living in a very savage world. Everything wants to destroy them. And so while those of the council may think that they are high society, that diplomacy can solve it all, Beast is seeing more and more that that's simply not the case. And that what's going to save mutant kind is people like Logan. Those willing to go out there, get their hands dirty, and do whatever it takes to protect this nation. And that does really seem like a more extremist type of view. But you really can't blame him either. We have seen so many different things at so many different fronts trying to attack Krakoa and all mutant kind. I mean, as it stands, mutants are banned from all of England. They have aliens on Game World that have been trying to massacre the entire planet. You have Orcus who is planning the demise of all of Krakoa. You have Moira who has been working against them and now is working with Orcus. You have Rasputin in Russia along with Omega Red. You know, I have been saying it for such a long time now. The odds are stacked against them in such great numbers. It looks like it is almost inevitable for them to fall. And it appears that it is almost unavoidable at this point for all out war. And so with this series really setting up what comes next for all of Krokoa, I for one cannot wait. So give me your thoughts, give me your theories. If you really enjoy the channel, please consider donating using the super thanks button. It will let you donate directly to the channel and it helps us greatly. If you can't do that, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and until the next breakdown.